I'm joined now by Dr. Susan Ozan, who is a plenary lecturer on the early environmental influences on type 2 diabetes risk. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Such an important topic, and I think if we identify some of these early influences, then we have a better chance as physicians, as patients, and really as parents in trying to make a difference in battling type 2 diabetes. So what were some of the major topics that came out? So absolutely, so what our research is focused on is understanding how events in early life, and by early life I mean even in utero, can impact on your long-term risk of type 2 diabetes. So there's growing evidence to suggest that if you develop in the womb in a suboptimal environment, that's going to substantially increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes and other associated conditions such as cardiovascular disease. And some of those key environmental factors which we think are critically important is early nutrition. So the nutritional environment that you develop in will impact on your long-term health. And suboptimal nutrition, which can be undernutrition or overnutrition, is detrimental to that long-term risk of type 2 diabetes. So certainly mothers need to start thinking about their diet, not only when they're pregnant, but also that influence and that message that they can send to children as they're growing up. Yeah, absolutely. So we've known for a long time that the diet we eat is going to impact on our health. But what this recent studies show is actually your diet during pregnancy is not going to only impact on your health, but could potentially have long-term effects on the health of your child and even your grandchildren. Is it because of how the children begin to desire some of the foods and the sugars and things that they got in utero as they grow up and begin to make food choices? That will certainly be part of it. So there's certainly growing evidence that if you're exposed to an obesogenic environment in utero, that will increase your risk of becoming obese later on in life. The mechanisms underlying that we're not precisely sure of, but it may be you have increased desire for highly palatable, high sugar, high fat foods than others. And then as they grow up, what is it that really pushes the envelope? Certainly being in an obesogenic environment is detrimental for anybody, but perhaps if you're pre-programmed to be detrimentally influenced by that obesogenic environment, you're going to do worse in that situation compared to people who've developed in a uh, optimal in utero environment. Obviously when we think about cause and effect here, if you know what is causing it, we can maybe affect some change and have people yeah. alter their habits. What kind of message do you think is sent to people based on the results of your research? So I think people know that eating a healthy diet is the best thing to do, but actually that's always very difficult mm -hmm. to enforce and it's very difficult to change behavior. But essentially, every little bit helps. So if you can improve your diet just slightly or even increase your physical activity slightly to prevent your risk of becoming obese, so you're more likely to be a lean mother during pregnancy, that's going to be beneficial to your children and your grandchildren. Is there something from this research that may actually help with treatment as well of type 2 diabetes? I think ultimately, yes, both in terms of treatment, in terms of prevention, intervention as well as novel therapeutic strategies. So we're doing a lot of molecular studies to really find out what's happening at the level of your pancreatic beta cell in your fat cells which is determining these long-term changes on your metabolism and they may well indeed be novel therapeutic targets. Such critical information at such a critical time with type 2 diabetes so much on the rise all over the world. Dr. Ozan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.